10 straight years of Tampa Bay Buccaneers football. Let's get it, boys. As I'm recording this, the Lions and the Buccaneers have not yet played in the playoffs. But obviously, the Lions are going to win. Now, this Buccaneers team is awesome. I really do like the team. But it would be really hard to win a Super Bowl with this team right now. And on average, we're going to go 9-8, and 8-9, eight, eight and maybe 10-7. and seven. And you kind of get stuck in this infinite loop of mediocrity. Because if you're really bad, you get an amazing draft pick. And if you're really good, you go to the Super Bowl. But anywhere in the middle, you kind of get stuck. So the goal, of course, is to win a Super Bowl. Let's talk about this team. It's an 83 overall with 83 offense, 85 defense. A lot of our star players are older, regressing, and on big contracts. So we'll definitely run into some salary cap issues too. We'll start on offense. We've got one of the best young offensive linemen in football, Tristan Wirfs. He's going to be a 99 very soon soon here, but he's already on a gigantic contract and it expires in two years. So we're going to have to pay the big boy. Mike Evans is another guy. Mike Evans is a cornerstone Buccaneer player, but he's 30. And in Madden past 30, you start to regress. He might not even have his superstar X factor in a few years here. We'll see what we can do, Mike Evans. Rashad White, definitely the future running back here. Arizona State Sun Devil. He's star. He's 80 overall. He's got 90 speed, 92 excel. I'm excited to see what we can do with him. Chris Godwin, is awesome too. He's got another good three, four years to get a little bit better, but neither him nor Mike Evans are exactly young. Luckily, we do have Trey Palmer. I don't know if you guys saw the stat, but every single day that Trey Palmer woke up and tweeted that he was pissed off, he scored a touchdown. So hopefully this is a pissed off Trey Palmer. He's really fast. 95 speed, 92 excel. We'll see how it goes. The biggest question mark on this team is Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield. I love Baker. He was almost out the league and he just beat the Eagles in the wildcard playoff. That's amazing. However, from a Madden standpoint, he's 28 years old, five years in the league. He's normal dev, meaning even if we get him really quickly to start dev, he's already 29 and on the verge of regressing. It's honestly stupid that Madden and makes quarterbacks regress like this. I mean, how old was Tom Brady when he won the bowl with the Buccaneers? Regardless, I don't know about Baker. We're definitely going to trust in him this year and probably next year, but I think we should look to draft a young rookie quarterback as his eventual replacement. And on to the defense where we have so many studs on this defense. There's only one starter who's not star or better development, which is insane. Our corners, Jamel Dean and Carlton Davis, both 26 years old, both on huge contracts. Probably my favorite defensive player on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And wow, does he look pissed off in that face scan. Antoine Winfield is a short safety, but he hits hard. He's 25 years old. He's star Evan. He's a 92 overall. He is going to progress like crazy. I will not be shocked if he hits 99 overall superstar X factor. One important thing we got to do with Antoine Winfield, we have to put him in at sub linebacker. If you sub linebacker your safeties, they'll get crazy good tackle stats. They're always in, and it's a really good way to get dev trade upgrades for them. So I want Winfield on the field at all times, no pun intended. Now, this is kind of like my problem point on this defense is Shaq Barrett, Levante, David, Vita Vea. These are our superstar abilities, but there's a good chance that even next year, none of these guys have their superstar abilities or they're not on the team. Levante David is beyond retirement. He's 33 years old as a middle linebacker. I will be shocked if he suits up next year. Shaq Barrett is where our edge pressure comes from. Tampa Bay runs a 3-4, which is perfect. You got Vita Vea in the middle and then pressure from Shaq. Barrett, but Shaq Barrett's getting old. Shaq Barrett is 30 years old and he's an 80 overall. That's probably not the future of the Buccaneers defense. What is the future is probably Joe Tryon Shoyinka. I like him a lot. He's 24 years old. He's a 75 overall speed rusher. He's got 83 speed, 86 excel. So we're going to have to develop him. Hopefully we can get him some stats. And then Vita Vea anchors the middle of this defense. He's 28. We probably got another good four or five years out of him, depending on how long he keeps his superstar status. He is in incredible, uh, but this is a 10-year rebuild. Then, of course, there's Kalijah Kansi, another good edge rusher rookie out of Pittsburgh. He's already a 76 overall speed rusher. So, if I had to say our priorities for the upcoming drafts, definitely gonna start Cody Mouch. I've gotta get Ryan Jensen to start at center. I don't know why he's not in right now, but he's definitely on this team. Could definitely draft a guard. Could definitely draft a wide receiver. 
Eventually, we got to draft a quarterback, but maybe not this upcoming one. We're going to have to replace Levante David. Devin White will be a good replacement, but who goes behind him? And we're absolutely going to have to replace Shaq Barrett. If we're going to run a 3-4, we need two good edge rusher linebackers. Once Shaq Barrett's gone, we're not going to have anybody. So I think my big priority right now is edge rusher outside linebacker from this upcoming draft. Before we kick off our very first year, let's talk about our schemes. I've elected to go Buffalo Bills offensive playbook, which is vertical power run. Tampa Bay offense is bad, and the best offenses are Kansas City and Dallas. But every single rebuild would be the same if we always ran Kansas City, Dallas. So I'm trying Buffalo. Vertical power runs a pretty good scheme fit for this team too, 70%. And we will stay in the base 3-4 Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. It's so perfect for this team, but I think our upcoming drafts will determine just how perfect it is. All right, boys, let's kick it off. Year one, let's see what Tampa Bay can do. And that's when disaster struck. I am so sorry, boys. I spent about eight hours on this video and I lost the footage from year one, year two, and year three. And the next seven years of footage from years 2025 to 2032, my audio is so scuffed. I am so sorry, but I'm gonna try and salvage this video. Let me give you a quick rundown of 23, 24, and 25, and I'll see you guys at the start of 26. I really apologize. I won't let this happen again. I hope you still enjoy the video. In the first year, we went 6-11. and 11. Dak Prescott won Super Bowl MVP and NFL MVP. Sure, Madden. They beat the Ravens. Rookie of the year was Rishi Rice. Defensive Rookie of the year, Brian Breesey. In the upcoming draft, we drafted Nigel Bradson, a right outside linebacker, to replace Shaq Barrett. He ended up being a solid player, but he was normal dev. So in 2024, Josh Allen wins Super Bowl MVP. Dak gets back-to-back -back NFL MVP. And the Bills beat the Rams. In 2025... We drafted a left end Dante Nix and he ended up winning defensive rookie of the year getting seven and a half sacks. He was star dev and he went up to superstar because of that defensive rookie of the year. Raiders win the Super Bowl and the MVP was a rookie middle linebacker, Zach Bolin. We made it to the wild card playoff in this season, but we lost in the first round. So in those first three years, we made the playoffs once, we lost. And now I'll have you guys take over. I'm really sorry about the audio. I hope you guys can enjoy. I won't make this mistake mistake again. I love y'all. Peace. Midway through season three, we are not looking good. One in five is definitely our worst start. Lost to the Seahawks. We beat the Dolphins. Then we lost to the Bills, the Jaguars, the Rams, and the Commanders. 39 to 53. Oh my. This is actually pitiful. We were horrible defensively. Our offensive rush game was horrendous. Our passing was pretty solid. Yikes. I'm honestly shocked. I felt like we were in a good position this year. So Baker was seventh in the NFL with his most passing yards so far. 30 and 15 is not good. 15 interceptions is actually nuts. Baker only got better and he regressed. 30 and 15 is, is really bad, actually. You've got Mahomes is 44 and 12. You've got Sam Howell at 39 and 7. You got Quinton Billingsley at 33 and 15. 31 and 5 is Hurts, yeah. I mean, he's up there in passing yards, but he's getting outplayed by rookies. Rashad White with a mediocre year here. Receiving Chris Godwin had a really big season. Downs had 1,092 and four touchdowns. Groves 664 and eight. Gosh, I'm honestly just worried that, you know, Godwin is now going to be on his ninth year and then Baker's getting older too. I think it might finally be time heading into year four to get a new quarterback. And defensively, this wasn't a great year either. Potential defensive rookie of the year. Seven sacks isn't a ton, but Dante Nix had a really good season with seven sacks. I'm happy about that. Shoyank had five and a half. Dodson with three and one and a half for Deion Brown. One for Devin White. Ijian Logan Hall. Interceptions wise, we had four from Jamel Dean. Nice. Two Carlton Davis, one from Deion Brown, one from Winfield. Yeah, I, honestly, I don't really know what happened. It was just a horrible year for us. That's the offensive rookie of the year. Looks like Pat Kindley came in sixth. He was our backup running back. I'm surprised that he's even on the board. Defensive rookie of the year is going to go to Dante Nix. That's actually massive. Hopefully he gets it for the whole league, but at the very least, he'll get it for the NFC. It was a very good draft pick. I'm still happy about that. Damn. Okay. Bummer year. Let's head to the off season. Uh, we do have some salary cap, so we should be able to make a move in free agency. Ah, gosh, I feel like I need to pick up some defense. So Raiders beat the Cowboys 27-17. Super Bowl MVP is Zach Bolin, who I assume is an auto-generated player. 
defensive rookie of the year of the entire league is Dante Nix with only seven sacks. So it must not have been a very strong year for rookie defensive players, but I'm totally happy with that, which means he got a dev trade upgrade. So if he was star, he's now a superstar, but if he was superstar, he's now X Factor. Okay, so taking a look at this season, looks like Chris Godwin got his dev trait re-upgraded to Superstar, so good for him. Downs and Groves kind of had off years. Rashad Wright was okay. Kindley is star. Levy is a star left guard, so that's good. Worfs is still looking really, really good. And then defensively, Dante Nix. Hey! So, oh wait, we got a lot of dev trait upgrades. Jamel Dean got one. Ryan Neal regressed. Devin White went up to Superstar, so that's really good. Winfield Superstar, and then Dante Nix. So Dante Nix Nix was a star dev player. Now he's upgraded to superstar. He gets two power rushers as well. Dante Nix is going to be really, really good. Yeah, honestly, this defense looks really, really good. I think we just need to consider moving Baker, which is sad, but I think we got to consider it. At least finding his replacement. All right free agency. We have 55 million cap, so that's really, really good. There's a 35-year-old Aaron Donald. Obviously, he's really good, but I just don't know. Do you sign him for a year for 29 million? I don't know if that's worth it. I just don't feel like we're ready to really win a Super Bowl, so... Why would we do that? We're not in a position to even sign free agents. Why would I sign Aaron Donald for one year just to go middle of the pack again? I'm not going to sign anybody. We're going straight to the draft and we've got a very high draft pick since we went three and 14. So we should get an absolute monster here. Hopefully a quarterback. Well, I have good news, gentlemen. We were so bad this year that we have the very first pick. Usually these are deep QB classes, but this one actually isn't. There's only two quarterbacks that are going in the top 10. There's Anthony Wall out of Auburn and there's Eric Hoyer out of Baylor. I've scouted both. Eric Hoyer is a lot better. So the mock draft is exactly what I'm going to do. We just got to hope this guy's a dog and this is Baker's future replacement. Maybe I'll start him this season. Maybe not. It's hard to say, but it is pretty easy to make your pick when you're round one, pick one, and the best quarterback is sitting right here. I'll let you guys take a look at him. So Eric Hoyer, he's a field general out of Baylor. He's 22 years old. Great throw power. That's really, really good. Solid speed, great change of direction. The rest of those intangibles aren't the best. So I have a feeling this guy is not generational by any means, but A medium accuracy, A short, B under pressure, B deep. He's definitely going to be just like a solid quarterback out the gates. And yeah, he's round one, pick one. We're going to get hidden dev. 87 change of direction, 85 excel, 92 throw power. Eric Hoyer, you know what's funny? He kind of looks like a poor man's Baker Mayfield a little bit. He'll fit right in in Tampa Bay. And our next pick's not till the fifth round. I'm glad we hung on to our first round in this draft and we can advance to the end. Let the CPU take over. Draft recap. Oh my goodness. Dude, the CPU auto draft has been so solid. They got a 72 overall tight end in the fifth round. That's actually really solid. I'll put him in behind K. Dotton. And then Eric Hoyer is a 74 overall. Yeah, he's not generational, but 74 is a great starting play, especially because he's hidden dev. He's round one pick one. So not the worst chance of him being superstar, but he's probably just star. 82 speed, 85 excel. 88 short, 86 mid, 78 deep. This guy's a stud. Dude, these throw power and short and mid. Just got working on his deep accuracy. Yeah. Hey, Eric Hoyer. That's the future of this franchise, I think. I'm excited. Looks like the best player in the class. Ooh, there was a generational free safety. Junior Singh out of Washington. 81, he was the last pick of the first round. There was a 78 corner, 77 halfback center D tackle, but it doesn't look like there was a better quarterback. So we did make the right quarterback choice. Baker's in his eighth year. Hoyer's already a 75, and he's got a really good chance at Offensive Rookie of the Year. I am gonna move Baker down in the depth chart. I might even trade him right now. I am moving Kevin Tiller to my backup tight end. Dude, can we give it up for the computer? Kevin Tiller is hidden dev. <laughs> I'm so proud of the CPU, dude. The Utah State rookie tight end. His stats kind of suck, but hey, he'll develop. It's a 10-year rebuild. All right, this Buccaneers roster is so lopsided. 91 on defense, 84 on offense, but that's because we've got the rookie starting. Let's see how he's doing halfway through the season. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I got Trey Baker while well, he's still got value. Oh my God, look at the trade offer we just got for Yaya Diaby. Someone's offering a superstar tight end who's 22? Titans are offering, oh my God. The Raiders are also offering a superstar tight end, Jeremiah Ambrose. Dude, this is like the deepest tight end class I've ever seen. And then a center, Bo Trenkel, and some draft picks. Okay, so do we take Doug Matthews or Jeremiah Ambrose? I'm taking Doug Matthews. I don't even use Yaya. We've now got three. Oh my God, wait a minute. Wait a minute, dude. 
So Doug Matthews is a blocking tight end? Well, no wonder they wanted to trade him. This is a weird tight end, but I'm still gonna rock with him, dude. Oh my God, he has 74 speed, 80 XL, 80 impact block. Of course you wanted to trade him away. I mean, I didn't really get fleeced. He's kind of a dog. How could we use a blocking tight end? What playbook would actually use this? Bills does kind of use this, but they also throw to their tight end. So, dude, I'm about to I'm about to create the greatest blocking tight end of all time. Doug Matthews is definitely a starter. The Jets are heavily interested in a veteran quarterback. You think I could get 96 Brees Hall, 25 years old, for a veteran Baker and Kindley? Now, just in case that's actually such an enticing offer, I'm gonna throw in a first and second round draft pick. Oh, salary cap. Never mind. Ooh, Seattle's interested. 99 overall Kenneth Walker. Oh, uh, would they do this? They wouldn't do this. Oh my God, we're not that far off though. We could get a 99 halfback. What if I just gave him a shot white? Kenneth Walker is younger and higher overall. Oh, no, I couldn't put a draft pick in there. Oh my God. Baker and Rashad White are headed to Seattle for 99 overall 25 year old Kenneth Walker. He's still got four years left on his deal. Dude, we just got to get Walker to superstar. 5'9", 25 out of, of course, Michigan State University. 96 speed, 97 excel. He's a, a stud. He absolutely is going for at least a thousand yards this season. Mid season, we are two and five in year four. It's actually better than where we were last time. And we got the rookie in. All right, let's head to the playoffs. We probably don't make them, but we get Offensive Rookie of the Year. Josh Downs develops, Kenneth Walker develops, and hopefully we'll be ready to win something in an upcoming season here. Well, 6-11 is an improvement, no matter what they say about us on Twitter.com. The question is, how did the rookie perform? He had 3,824 passing yards, but you know what's crazy? He had virtually the same touchdown interception ratio as Baker did. He actually had a slightly better. So he didn't get the yards that Baker got, but already in his debut season, I think he's headed for greatness. Kenneth Walker, 1,311. Amazing season for him. We knew that was going to happen. And receiving Josh Downs as the leader with 1,112 touchdowns. Godwin, 916 and nine. He's definitely getting to his last legs. And Christopher Groves, 837 and two. Even Doug Matthews, the tight end, who's known for his blocking, went for 483 and four. Solid, solid season. Defensively, Devin White, almost 140 tackles. Deion Brown, 130. Dodson with 90. Our sack numbers are, ooh, never mind. Dante Nix is becoming a dog. 13 TFLs and 10 sacks is a really good season for uh, for Dante. Five and a half for Vita Vea, four for Shoyinka, three for Kalaja Kansi. Nigel Dodson, who we drafted a while ago, really hasn't done much. Might consider switching up my defensive scheme. And then interceptions, we got three for Winfield, one for Devin, one for Carlton Davis. Is that offensive rookie of the year numbers? Yeah, Eric Hoyer's not going to get it. That's a bummer. Greg Cox is going to get it. I don't even know what position he is, but good for him. Oh, look at this. 2026 Super Bowl was a rerun, and the Chiefs won it again. Armand Cheeks won defensive rookie of the year. Oh my God. Okay. Headed into free agency, we clearly need a center since Ryan Jensen retired, and we need a right tackle. Kevin Tiller is a superstar X Factor. This was the fifth round pick by the computer. Okay, we have to change something. We need a tight end dominant playbook. We have two insane tight ends. Godwin's regressing. Hoyer is a star dev 82 overall. We've got to sign a center and a right tackle in free agency. Defensively, Vita Vea regresses. Nix is still X factor. Cansey looks good. Linebackers look great. Ooh. Winfield's up to X Factor, but we lost Ryan Neal. So we've got to sign a strong safety too. <laughs> I need to show you guys something though. At first I was like, did I accidentally put tight end draft class strength on super strong? Nope. I am normal draft class strength on everything. These are just the most astronomical tight ends I've ever seen. Whatever, man. I am not gonna complain about it. So we have a high draft pick and we've got a good amount of cap space. This could be a really, really good season for us. So look at that, Sam Laporta 94 overall is in free agency. Tyree kills in free agency. We don't need him either. Looks like we could pick up Tevin Jenkins. Let's try and get him on a four year deal and I'll move Jenkins probably to right tackle or center. It's a really strong offer, he should accept that. And here's a good option, Nicholas Petit Freer. He's only 27 years old. He only wants a one year deal, but I would like to have him for a lot longer than that. He's a solid seven 
79 overall, and he's 27 years old, so he's got a good four years in him. Yeah, there are no good safeties available in this free agency class. Let's just take those two. Dude, I just realized, too, that since Doug Matthews is an insane blocking tight end, he's also probably an insane fullback. We'll get Tiller to starting tight end, and my backup can be Kate Otten, and then Matthews can be fullback. Everything else on this O-line looks so much better now that we got Tevin Jenkins and Petit Freer Jenkins at right guard. Petit Freer at right tackle. Mouch is at center. Levy, who we drafted at left guard, and Werfs is obviously still amazing. So offensive line looks really, really good now. And then defensively, we just got to draft a safety because we got Cansey, we got Nix, we got Vita Vea, then Dodson and Shoyinka, Winfield, Jamel Dean. Yeah, we just need a safety. We have round one pick six. This might be a pick that we trade down from unless there is a really monster safety just sitting here but I don't know. There's usually not safeties up this high. Ooh. Or do I just take him right now because I know he's probably our guy. Luke McLean looks nasty. A man coverage, B play rec, A hit power. He's a strong safety. Elite speed. Oh my God. I am not overthinking this shit. Ooh. Yeah, I could technically have traded down since he was 13th there, but there's no reason to risk it when he looks that good. 5'10 hybrid safety out of Cal, 93 speed, 92 excel, and he's hidden depth. That's literally exactly what we needed. The rest of this draft could go poorly and we'd be just fine, but I'm still going to draft because I'd love to get some more studs. Round two, pick six. I think we're going to need to eventually replace Vita Vea. Vita Vea is going to be the next guy that retires on this team. It's pretty tough to get good D tackles. We can give it a go. This is a run stopper left end who definitely could play D tackle we could switch him over elite strength marginal speed great excel that is a weird player but you know what he's 30166 run stopper I'm gonna take Sean Mitchell I got a little cocky after my last good pick he's normal dev we'll see what Sean Mitchell pans out to be but worst case scenario I could move him to D tackle and he could replace Vita Vale no third or fourth rounder we traded those earlier in the season so we'll sim to the end and honestly I know the CPU is cracked since they drafted me an X, X factor tight end draft recap Luke McLean 80 overall is that considered generational I don't know but he's 93 speed 92 excel guys a fucking monster 83 hit power. Great man. Great zone. Great pursuit. This dude is a beast. Sean Mitch is a 72. That's really not that bad. Computer got me Boswell out of Michigan State, who's a 71, a 70 D tackle, and a 64. It's really not that bad. I, we might have got the best player in the draft. Let's find out. Best player in the class is Luke McLean. Let's go. That's so sick. It's the only position I needed, too. Chuck Money is the next best out of Oregon. 97 speed. Jabari Burley, D tackle out of Virginia. That's, oh. That feels so good. All right, boys, season five, we're looking really good. We've made the changes we need to put this team in the right spot. We've got young, new offensive players. We've got an awesome young tight end. Josh Downs and Groves are our young wide receivers. Kenneth Walker is a 99. Hoyer, obviously, our second year quarterback. We've got Deion Brown. We've got the new Luke McLean, the best player in that draft class. Winfield's a hard 99, but he's going to regress. He's getting old. Same with Vita Vea. Vita Vea might be on his last legs here. So so if this is going to be a really, really good season, we have a chance for the Super Bowl this season, but we have a really good chance next season too. So let's just see what we can do. And it looks like we have a trade offer for Deion Brown. Oh my God, they're offering Trayvon Morig a fifth and a seventh for Deion Brown. I like Deion Brown though. I don't know if I really want to part ways with the boy. No fucking way. We're getting offered a superstar 24-year-old corner, Terrell Harper for Deion Brown. We're getting offered Jordan Davis. What are these trades? This is some casual ass... Okay, I, I did whiff on that one tight end. I think we take the corner. I like Jordan Davis. I do. He's that Vita Vea replacement. Gosh, a superstar corner. Jamel Dean's getting old too. I'm taking Terrell Harper. Let's trade away Jamel Dean now because we just got a super good, super young corner. And now we've got so many corners. Yeah, Jamel Dean is 30 and he's star. He's still good though. Like there's definitely going to be teams that want him. Raiders look like they need a corner. I wonder if I could get Max Crosby off of them. Jamel Dean and my first round pick for Max Crosby. My pick has really high value because it's round one pick six technically, but we're going to have a really good season. So I think let's make sure I don't fleece myself. Let's throw in their second round pick. <laughs> he just got 99 Max Crosby. Holy shit. <laughs> Here we 
we go. Here we go. Oh, my God. All right, so we have no round one in this upcoming year, but now we have Max Crosby, Dante Nix. Without Deion Brown, we do have a little vacancy here at our backup middle linebacker. Right now, it's favors, but we do have a hidden dev named Spruce. So let's throw a Spruce in there. Let's take a look at Terrell Harper. So we just got Terrell Harper, two-year player out of Washington State. 92 speed, 92 man, 92 excel, decent zone coverage. And he's already superstar is so crazy. Uh, doesn't have the best abilities. Give him unfakeable in mid zone KO. Good lord. All right, well, we got to win a Super Bowl in the next two years, though, because we have Max Crosby for at least two years, and he'll be a 99 for that time period. So let's see how this regular season goes. Oh, we're back. We're back in the playoffs at the 9-8 and eight seed. Here we go. Let's take a look around the league. Hoyer, 4,000 passing yards, seventh in the NFL. Not bad. He threw 30 touchdowns, eight interceptions. And for some reason, Carlos Cardona came in. He threw two. NFC Offensive Player of the Year, Kenneth Walker. That's awesome. Defensive player of the year was almost Max Crosby, but it was Micah Parsons. Holy shit. Defensive rookie of the year. None other than Luke McLean. Offensive rookie of the year. I don't even think we had anybody. Yeah, we didn't have anybody that could have gotten that. Dude, our trades. Our trades are looking strong. So Walker had, whoa. Oh my God. Okay, he's definitely going to superstar. Holy shit. That might be the best running back season I've ever had ever. 1,743 and 21. Are you kidding me? Otten. What? That's not right. Oh no. I think I accidentally started Kate Otten. It's not a big deal, but that definitely should have gone to Tiller, who's the superstar X Factor. For Kevin Tiller, our superstar X Factor, to actually sit here with one reception for five yards is so sad. So I definitely messed that up. Josh Downs gets 949 and 9. Groves gets 775 and 5. Godwin 632 and 6. Yeah, that's a bummer. I shouldn't have. Kate Otten should never be our lead receiver. I don't know how I did that, but I goofed it. Looks like we didn't play nearly as much defense, but I suppose we were actually winning games. We had 17 and a half sacks out of Crosby, nine out of Knicks, and eight and a half out of Shoyanka, six out of Itavea. And Carlton Davis had five interceptions. Luke McLean had four and three TFLs and a sack. No wonder he won it. Three for Winfield, two for Dodson, two for Terrell Harper, the newbie. All right. Nice work, boys. Really good season. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, no, we didn't make the playoffs. My bad. That didn't make any sense. I almost just thought we had a buy in the wild card. We actually didn't make the playoffs. That's kind of a bummer. But we are in such a good position next season because Kenneth Walker is getting an upgrade. Eric Hoyer will probably get a dev trade upgrade. And this team's going to look monstrous. <laughs> Luke McLean. Was he superstar? And then he got X Factor? What happened here? No, there's no dev trade upgrade in here. Defensive Rookie of the Year gave him a bunch of XP, but it didn't give him a dev trade upgrade. So he was out the box superstar X Factor. We have now drafted two superstar X Factors, one personally and one by the CPU. Okay, in this upcoming draft class, we got to get ourselves a center. Potentially could grab a wide receiver. And defensively, I really don't even think I could do a single thing to improve it. Actually, no, I'll back up in a linebacker. We've got some targets in the draft here. We don't have a first round pick, but we do have two second round picks. Montrell Singleton has great speed, elite acceleration, good in everything else. Or sorry, Montel Singleton. He's normal dev, deep threat, 93 speed, 94. So he's got good stats, just not as good as we were hoping. We have two second round picks, so we'll be able to kind of go for a little back to back here. I do need that backup middle linebacker. Could always draft an outside linebacker and move them. We also could take Wendell Williams here. Great speed, solid strength, great excel. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take Wendell Williams, hidden MD tackle. This will be an excellent replacement for Vita Vea, who's definitely going to be out of here soon. He was an X Factor two years ago. He's star dev right now. That's how quickly he's regressed. Now let's pick up that backup middle linebacker in the third round. Tanner White, field general middle linebacker. He's fallen in rank, but he's got elite agility, great speed, great jump, great excel. Tanner White kind of looks like a a stud. Yeah, he's a normal dev, but an 88 speed, 90 excel field general out of Iowa. All right. I'm very excited about that. He'll probably be at least a, a 69 overall, I'm hoping. Year five is now in the books. Year six, we've got Max Crosby. We've still got Vita Vea. Our young quarterback's looking really good. I think this is our season to really make a Super Bowl push. Singleton's a 71. Williams is a 72. White is a 70. This is probably our worst draft so far. Sorry. Yeah, this was, this was not the one the best player in the class what the what 
There's an 85, an 83, and an 81. Lonnie Morrison, how are you an 85 overall? 92 speed, 87 break tackle. Damn, 99 juke move. A generational halfback. All right, boys, it's a make or break season. Max Crosby's on his final year. He's about to turn 32. Vita Vea is regressing, but we've got 99 overall. Kenneth Walker, Josh Downs is a 94. Oh, I'm nervous. Holy shit. <laughs> 16 and 1. Dude, what? Who did we even lose to? So Hoyer's a 97 star dev at this point. Tiller's an 88. I wasn't able to get my hands on a center. I did forget about that, but you know what? It didn't matter. Our 74 overall McGee got the job done. Downs is up to a 99. Weldon and Godwin are hanging on. We're going to need some wide receivers in the future here. Vita Vey is on his last legs, but Wendell Williams is ready to replace him next season. Crosby's got upgrades. McClellan's a 97 in year two. It's disgusting. Tanner White looks like he had a solid season. Shoyinka is superstar. Yeah, we are chilling. We are chilling, boys. This is our best season by far finally hoyer is fourth in the nfl in passing yards 34 and 2 that's almost probably an mvp season walker another amazing season 1575 21 touchdowns tiller at 1066 and 11 downs at 1041 and 11 weldon 948 and 5 marcus weldon chris godwin 712 and 3 kenneth walker had a lot of receiving yards so marcus weldon came in to replace christopher groves christopher groves wanted a mega contract and i just couldn't afford it so we ended up going with marcus Weldon, who was like a deep pick by the CPU a few years ago. Works out for us defensively. Devin White has been an anchor on this team for so long. Great work. Tanner White with the second most tackles. Sacks, 18 Crosby, 12 and a half Shoyinka, 11 Dante Nix. Holy shit. Our team has so many sacks. Interceptions, three for the GOAT, Luke McClellan, one for Tanner, one for Carlton, one for Terrell, one for Winfield. Literally absurd season. This has got to be our Super Bowl season. All right, our divisional game is against the Panthers, an NFC South rival, 11 and 6. I'm going to step in and play a little on offense and a little on defense, but I don't want to like actively really impact this game. I'm going to put on the creamsicles, baby, because I'm wearing them. They still got Bryce Young, Eric Hoyer trotting out there. So there's Tanner White and there's Devin White. Oh my God, I just realized both of my linebackers are white, even though Devin White is black. Does that make any sense? Okay, whatever. We got the white duo. This D-line is disgusting. Got Juan Jefferson coming over, and guess who? Try on Shoyanka. We're going to go mid-blitz here, and I'm going on the GOAT Luke McClellan. Look at all the abilities on this defense. Get home, Matt Cro <laughs> Max Crosby almost smokes him. I'm gonna run that same thing. That defense is disgusting. Look at all the abilities, dude. This team is so nasty. All right, where's McClellan? Oh, he tries to hook one deep. Intercepted. Antoine Winfield. It's Julian Jefferson. Sorry, guys. There's a lot of players. <laughs> That was open, too. That deep route was open, but luckily we got to him. This D-line is so impressive. It took us six years, but this could be a serious dynasty. All right, let's see where we start. Looks like we got a crosser out of Josh. Oh, Matthew. Oh, no. I need it. Oh, my God, and he's spinning on me. Damn, I thought that was open, but I didn't have the zip that I needed. I can't have any more impact. That's an offensive and a defensive drive. I got to go. All right, Carolina's got six. Tampa Bay's got seven. Now 14. Now 21. Shit, they're a lot better off without me. 21-12, 29-12. Let's check in for a few of these final plays here. Third and seven. You know, I should just hand it off Kenneth Walker. We got this 99 hat back, and that's exactly what we're going to do right here as we take a cakewalk over the Panthers. Walker goes for a few. We're going to punt this away, but that's the ball game. We got to get the super. Dude, let's build the dynasty right now. Let's, let's go. NFC chips coming up. Ooh, taking on San Francisco, who's 14 and three. Let's play ball. Niners start on the board. I'm going to step in here with Kenneth Walker and maybe put us on the board ourselves. Good stiff arm, but we're down to the four. Let's just go back to the stretch. They can't stop the stretch here, can they? We'll go bench. Got to look at the boy, Kevin Tiller. Heat's too hot. What do we got, Hoyer? This is a big down for us. There's Kevin Tiller. Dude, he's a dog. He's so good. All right, touchdown Buccaneers. Now we got a big third down stop. I'm going to step in with Devin White and Tanner White. Third and three. What are they going for? A pass to McCaffrey. Oh, I missed. I was so close to that. But that's all right. We got a third and 10 now here. Max Crosby gets home. We got this. 
Ooh, great defense! We don't need Max Crosby, because we got Dante Nix. Great stop right there. I'll take over once more in the red zone, and this will be my final input on this game. I gotta let the boys take over after that. First and goal. It's gonna be a Kenneth Walker day, baby. No doubt. Where are you blocking? Oh, doesn't matter. Kenneth Walker's insane. All right, here we go, boys. Tampa Bay, 14 to 7. Now 21 to 7. Oh my God. We're really just steamrolling. Wait, 28 14. Oh my God. 45 to 14. Brock Purdy is desperately trying to put some points up. I respect that. But dude, this game is cooked. It's cooked. George Kittle? Maybe it's not cooked. Luke, you better track him down. That's my X Factor. That's my Luke. They're not calling timeouts. They just want the touchdown. It doesn't really matter to them if they, you know, get it quick or not. Quick pass, going nowhere. This game is over. What a game for Eric Hoyer. Almost a perfect passer rating. 23 for 27, 280, four touchdowns. Walker, 14 for 68. Luke gets an interception. Two sacks for Max Crosby, one for Wendell, one for Dante Nix, one for Vita Vea. A big dub against the Niners. We're on to the Super Bowl, baby. Finally, year six may be our first Super Bowl. We're taking on, oh my God, the 14 and three Baltimore Ravens. Look at this. All right, boys, let's see what we can do. Tampa Bay's first Super Bowl under new management. I appreciate all the fans for waiting six years for this, but I think it's going to pay off because we might have just rebuilt a serious dynasty as we start the Super Bowl with three. Baltimore gets three, then 10. We get 10 of our own. They get seven. We return with three. We return with seven. Let's check in. A hey, three-point lead in the third quarter of the Super Bowl. We've got the ball. Let's go, Tampa Bay. Dude, I love these cream school units. They're so sick. Ooh, fakes the handoff to Walker, throws a sketchy pass. Third and two. Dude, literally just feed Kenneth Walker until this game's over. That was the best trade we made, I think. I don't know. I guess Max Crosby did have 18 sacks this season. Oh, my goodness. Can we actually run out this clock in the bowl? A touchdown here might seal it. Hoyer. Hoyer sacked. What if Owe has two and a half sacks today? Second and 18, we go for the handoff here. Interesting, make it third and 11. It's a big pickup though. All right, five wide, empty backfield. Eric Hoyer, I'm getting Brian Hoyer flashbacks. It's his son. Oh my God, these blitzes are nasty. Marlon Humphrey comes through the middle and we're punting the ball to the Ravens here. Yikes. Baltimore digs themselves a hole. On their ensuing drive, it's fourth and 16. They have to go for it. This is the ball game. Pressure. Collapsing, swatted. Look at that defense. Tanner White, I think, was in his face. And the swat down comes in. I Is that the bowl? Tan oh, it kind of is. Tampa Bay's in range. There's two Baltimore timeouts. They really just need a first down, and it's over. You can kneel it out. Kenneth Walker, how are you going to let up a seven-yard run in that scenario? Second and three. Hand off Walker. He's not there. This would end the game. If they don't get it here, they're going to have to take a field goal. Counter. <gasps> Play action. Psychopath play calling. End zone. <laughs> Josh Downs just iced the Super Bowl. Oh my God, the balls on Todd Bowles. Dude, I thought it was a handoff. Uh, it should have been. Holy shit. Baltimore does march down and score, but as soon as Tampa Bay gets the ball back, it's all over. 27 to 24. Eric Hoyer is a Super Bowl champion. Kenneth Walker, Max Crosby. And shout out to the OG Buccaneers. Vita Vea, Chris Godwin, Antoine Winfield, Tryon Shoyinka, Tristan Wirfs. Honestly, a super good duel in the Super Bowl, and it was a great game too. Hoyer did throw an interception, but honestly, Kenneth Walker took that game over five and a half yards per carry and a touchdown beast mode dude look at this free agency class holy shit so there's max crosby who obviously is heavily interested in re-signing with us since this was his last season but we did just win dude there's two 99 x-factor quarterbacks dylan Pittman and josh allen there's some great offensive linemen. Larry Vereen, 93 star, and he's young. Karlaftis is in there. McCaffrey's in there. Nelson. Okay, well, let's try and re-sign Crosby. He'll play for three years. He'll obviously regress, but he's still really, really good. We'll give him a player-friendly deal. He's going to re-sign with us. I even could save a little bit of money here, but I don't want to risk him going to a different team because he's going to get a lot of offers. Let's just give him a player-friendly deal. Hopefully, he re-signs with us. Oh, uh, yeah, the Raiders are giving a pretty big offer, ironically. Vereen doesn't look like he's gonna sign with us i do kind of need a center or somebody that can play center jermaine wagner 87 overall star he's interested i'm gonna give him a player friendly and that's pretty much it for cap space so those are the only two signings we're gonna make 
we don't get Max Crosby. Shit, Crosby goes to Vegas. I really did want him. Maybe I go for Karlaftis now that we don't have Crosby. Damn, losing Crosby is a huge hit to this team. So we do get Wagner. We boost the O-line. Damn, I really did want Crosby though. I'm going to go for George Karlaftis here. I'm going to give him a player friendly, increase his salary, try and get him for four years. He'll be 32, which is how old Crosby is right now. See if we pick him up. We do. So we get George Karlaftis and Jermaine Wagner in free agency. We lose Max Crosby to Vegas. Yikes. All right. Well, in the draft, we're round one pick 32. We're really deep down here. We've already replaced Vita Vea. We really need a wide receiver. Here's Thomas Hackett out of Penn State with elite speed, change of direction, agility, and great excel, great jumping. If this dude is not hidden dead, I don't know what to say. That's exactly what we're looking for. So Josh Downs is still really good, has some years left. Godwin's about done. A 5'8", 175, small wide receiver, but hidden dev with gnarly stats. That's exactly what we need. Uh, there's really nothing else I need significantly, so I'm going to let the CPU take over on this one. I think next season, I might even consider trading my draft picks because I feel like the value we could get would be higher. We're rebuilt. We have young quarterback kind of just need cap space, really. We're running out of cap, though. We're back down to 6.8 million available cap space. So it's going to get a little spooky. We'll take a look at the 2029 draft recap where we land a 75 overall hidden dev wide receiver. CPU grabs me a uh, normal dev left tackle, but that's okay. And the rest of these are criminal whiffs by the CPU, but I can't be mad. They got me the X-Factor stiller. Entire NFL, the best player was a quarterback, Paul Logan out of Auburn, went to the Lions. And then Dalvin Semple, middle linebacker, I went to the Chargers 81 overall. Solid class. Hoyer is now a superstar. Offensive line still looks amazing. Tiller, 87 overall. Downs is a 96. We've got our new wide receiver, Hackett. Chris Godwin did retire. And then Singleton's our wide receiver, three. Wide receivers don't look as good as they have been, but I think Hackett's going to have a big season. I've got him at slot wide receiver. We've got Carlaf. This Vita Vale officially normal dev. It's time to start Wendell Williams. Wendell, since he didn't do anything last season, is actually normal dev, so he regressed. Uh, Nick's 96 overall. That was such a good draft pick. Harper regressed, sadly, but we still have amazing corners. McLean, still X-Factor. Winfield, still X-Factor. Looks like the CPU did get a hidden dev, even though it's 66 overall. Devin White regressed a little bit. Shoyinka went X-Factor. Then we got Tanner White and Dodson. Team looks amazing. Absolutely ready to go win some ball games. I don't think we go 16-1 and one again because we don't have Max Crosby. I feel like that Max Crosby was a big difference maker, but I still think we have a good shot at the Super Bowl, and we should certainly make the playoffs. Off. So let's see how this follow-up season goes. I'm looking for offensive rookie of the year. All right, so we go 10 and 7. We don't win the NFC South. That goes to the Falcons. We're taking on 99 overall X Factor Puka Nakua, but we are a 95 overall normal draft classes in year seven. That's pretty awesome. This is one of the better rebuilds I've ever done. So I'm really happy with how it's going so far, but I want to get a second Super Bowl for sure. Let's take a look at how we did this season. Looks like we didn't do exactly as well as I was hoping. We get fifth in the NFC. Fell in passing yards, 28 and 6. Walker, 1,520. Good Lord, he's been so insane since we got him. Thomas Hackett, those look like offensive rookie of the year numbers. I'm hoping 1,106. Tiller, 945 and 8. Downs, 807. Singleton, 768 and 2. And then Kenneth Walker with good receiving yards once again. So defensively, how are we looking? Devin White, the anchor. Every single season, he's had the most tackles. Tanner White's getting close, though. Yeah, we did take a regression in the sacks department. We have three guys in double digits. That's awesome. Dante Nix, Shoyinka, and Vita Vea still. Damn. Vita Vea? You didn't even start. I guess Vita Vea was probably my rush D tackle. That's why. Karlaftis had five, but yeah, I mean, Max Crosby had 18 and a half. That's, that's a pretty big difference. Not a lot of interceptions this season. Two for Winfield, two for Davis, two for Harper, and Luke McLean does get one. Okay, he's got at least an interception every single season. All right, let's see if we make it through this wild card. If we do, we can check in at the divisional. Wow. In our follow-up right after the bowl, we lose to the Rams 34 to 28. That's a, I honestly thought that was going to be a cakewalk. Year seven, unfortunately, couldn't back-to-back -back the Super Bowl, but I do have an idea. We're going to have some decently valuable draft picks since we're 10 and 7, not 16 and 1. I think we got to go ahead and get a guy just like Max Crosby. I know we just signed George Karlaftis. 
but without abilities, he's just not Max Crosby. So I think we might go ahead, trade George Karlaftis and some draft capital and get ourselves a superstar X-Factor monster edge rusher. And we don't need a guy that's going to stick around for too long. Once again, we're ready to win a Super Bowl right now. Let's just add a crazy defensive piece. That should be enough. So after the season, Vita Vea officially retires. So it's all Wendell Williams here on out. Karlaftis is a 94 star. I think I am going to trade him. I got to get a guy like Max Crosby. That was our recipe for for success and we lost Crosby to Las Vegas so let's see who we can pick up in his place honestly I don't even have the cap space for this I think we just gotta rock with this team and I don't know maybe it was just an off year I felt like this is still a really good team we just had a bad year round one pick 20 what can we get out of this potentially a edge rusher of the future I guess I'll go Aiden Hayes but I don't think this dude's hidden dev oh clutch Aiden Hayes, big clutch, 87 strength, 76 excel, 66 speed, whatever. Tristan Wirf's future replacement. It's a 10 year rebuild. We got to think of everything. Aiden Hayes was only a 71. Dude, why are these the greatest tight ends of all time? Alani Johnson, 78 overall. Hidden Dev, Oklahoma State tight end with 88 speed. Dude, what is going on? I've never seen this, bro. It's on normal strength. Take a look at the whole class. Best players at 79 overall. Literally, the CPU just auto-drafted me the third best player in the class in the third round. Alani Johnson out of OK State. Dude, do I put him in? Do I trade Tiller and put him in? I got too many good tight ends. This is crazy. We are negative on cap space, though. We are hurting. Yeah, we kind of got to win it right now because I really can't make any trades. We have no cap space. The year is 2030, boys. Let's see what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can do. We won a Super Bowl. We made the playoffs and lost in the first round. Now, what do we got here? Dude, there's just something about being 9-8 and eight that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers absolutely love. I have been 9-8 and eight so many times. In week 18, we just lost to the Falcons, and now we take them on in the wild card. There's absolutely no reason for us to change anything. Eric Hoyer has certainly come a long way. The Baylor quarterback, Scott, kind of looks like a Josh Allen. He's got the speed and the excel. Ah, he doesn't have the throw power, though. Kenneth Walker is still rocking a hard 99 superstar X Factor, although he's lost one speed, so he's definitely getting older. Taylor is almost a 99. This dude's a beast, but he's actually kind of slow, bro. Like, that other guy that the CPU drafted, Johnson... He might be the future. Hackett's now an 86 with 97 speed, so he's obviously amazing. We're 9 and 8, but our Super Bowl chances are a lot. Let's see if we get through the Falcons, and if we do, I can take on this next round. But I like to see 35 to 27 dub over the Falcons. We're taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Dude, we're a 96 overall. Oh my god. Goodness. All right, let's play ball. Let's play a few moments in this game, and then we'll sim to see what our squad can do. We still got the white linebacker duo. Quarterback's going to take off and get rocked by Devin White. I love that. I'm going to go on Luke McLean here. Second and seven. He's got an underneath to the halfback that I've got covered. He's going to check down. What? Dante Nix was in coverage for some reason. Can't be having that. Let's blitz. Let's get home. I'm on Winfield. First and goal. We know it's a run. There's the handoff. Oh, it's play action. He chucks it to Hawkinson. I thought for sure that was a run. They got me there. Well, we get to take over ourselves. I don't even know what play this is. Ooh, look at the route. Is that Hackett? Didn't even tell me who it is. It's got to be Hackett. That was 97 speed for sure. All right, let's go to Kenneth Walker. We got a 99 overall halfback. We've got a superstar tight end at fullback. We got Tiller. The only person I'm worried about blocking is Hackett. He puts up a great block. I'm so bad. How do I not get in right there? Second time's the charm. Let's go, Walker. Let's go, Walker. No way. I just got sucked out of my dive from some Bogue tackle animation. Second and goal. Same shit, different day. Come on. He just fumbled. And the... Oh, my goodness. All right. That's all right, boys. Let's keep it together. We got the speed demon hack in man coverage. Pressure's too quick. Damn. Let's try again. Let's believe. Hey, there's the speed demon. It's Nathaniel Hackett's son, actually. All right, first and 10. Here we go. Right in the middle. You're going to leave one of the best tight ends in the league unguarded? All right, here we go. It's a big blitz right there. There's X in the middle. First and 10, boys. We got to get in the end zone. All right, let's look at Kevin Tiller. Let's look at Kevin Tiller on this play action. Oh, yeah. He's got a linebacker in coverage. We love that. Let's go. Kevin Tiller. Such a beast, tight end. It's seven to seven. I'm going to take over for one more drive. Kind of like hack it over the top of this if this is man coverage. Oh, it sure is. 
There's Hackett. Great catch. It's so weird saying Hackett. I keep thinking of Nathaniel Hackett. And we could punch it in in the red zone here. We're on the five. And they are not ready to stop Kenneth Walker. So we are going to Kenneth Walker. Gosh, you're going to need a lot more than three down. Dude, I, I keep getting... <gasps> I suck right now. Three down linemen on the one. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, Minnesota? All right, 14 to seven. Minnesota ties it up 14 to 14. 21 to 17. Wait, there's not much time left. Who's got the ball? Minnesota's punting and they're up by four. So we have a chance, but not a big one. No timeouts. No, we're not going to take this home, are we? 17 seconds left in a dream. Our Super Bowl dreams are on the line. Our playoff run on the line. What a ball. Get out of bounds. Oh my God. No way this is possible. What a throw to Josh Downs. 11 seconds. It's actually possible. You can't get sacked. This is why we have Tristan Wirfs. No way. Tristan Wirfs, who are you blocking? Another laser. You got to go end zone now. Second and 10. Honestly, if that was caught, it would have been a bad ball. Five seconds left. Tristan Wirfs, we need you to stop 96 right now. I don't know who that is, but he's scaring me. Yes. Great double team. End zone. End zone. Swatted down. And year eight ends in the divisional round. Damn it. Hoyer with 326 touchdown. What's in store for us in year nine, boys? We're, we're having a lot of success. We're winning a lot of games. We're clearly a successful franchise, but we only have one ring to show for it. And I feel like man, who wants to win a bunch of games but not go to the bowl? What are we, the Dallas Cowboys? <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> no luck in free agency since we're a negative 30 mil in available cap space. We've got round one, pick 26. I think an eventual replacement for Winfield isn't the worst idea, but we might just need to take the best position available. Tyreek Crosby, outside linebacker, elite speed, great excel. I got to take that every single time. Hidden Dev, 6'5", 250 at LSU with 86 speed and 88 excel. Yes. Definitely the right choice. I don't know that he'll be an impact in this year or next year too much just because we do have really good linebackers still, but this is a 10-year rebuild and I still got to think about the future of this team. I can't just like shell out fully for a Super Bowl and then have them be fucked for the next year, you know? This is basically like the best player available theory. Theo Hankins was a dog too. We just drafted two hidden dev linebackers back to back and I'll let the CPU take over for the rest. That's a really solid first and second round. Draft recap. So Crosby's a 74, Hankins is a 70. 73. That's awesome. CPU got a 71 halfback. Probably not the worst idea because Kenneth Walker's getting older. Best in the class is 81 Luke Carrington wide receiver. Then there's Nick Newton and Niles Hayden. So headed into year nine, we do have some serious regressions. We couldn't afford Tryon Choyinka. We're already negative 30 million salary cap and he's a superstar X Factor outside linebacker. So he's gone. McLean regressed. Somehow this dude's been such a dog. I don't know how he regressed down to superstar, but he did. Nix is a 99. McLean's a 99. Winfield's a 98. Harper's a 95. Jefferson's a 93, but now our backup corner since Jamel Dean we traded and Carlton Davis retired, or maybe it's the other way around, but regardless, our third corner's not so great. Good thing we got those linebackers because I had vacancies. Crosby and Hankins now are actually starters, so they will be impactful. Walker, Hoyer, Taylor are amazing. I have three superstar tight ends. You know, if we really needed to, we could do something about that, but I'm not sure what I'd really want to mess with on this team right now. We're in a good position. I feel kind of scummy, like scheming the CPU for trades though. So I just want to see how this year nine is going to go with this team that we truly built right here. The fact that we have Hoyer at a 98 and Walker at a 98 and that amazing tight end, I feel like that should be enough. Year nine's an improvement. We did have an easier regular season schedule, but we'll be taking on, this is so crazy because this playoff game in real life hasn't happened yet. We're taking on the Lions, who are 8-9 and nine and made the playoffs. Taking a look at our stats for the season. Hoyer keeps finishing really well, 4,308, 29-6. Walker still an absolute dominant force. Downs, 1,060. Tiller, 970 and 8. I feel like our receiving stats aren't as good as some of the season we've had. We've had multiple 1,000-yard seasons. And look who finally is the leader, Tanner White. And oh my gosh, Devin White is gone. I forgot about that. We couldn't afford Devin White either. God, this team has changed so much. Dante Nix is really doing everything for us on QB sacks. But, you know, we definitely miss having Max Crosby, Vita Vea, and Dante Nix. That was when we won the Super Bowl. Pretty hard to replicate it with the talent we have right now. I think, I don't know, I think I'm basically like overpaying at positions that I don't need to be paying for. Like I'm, I'm spending 35 mil right now on Tristan Wirfs on his last legs. So yeah, it's just tough.
one Super Bowl in 10 years with this good of a team is, is actually proven pretty damn difficult. I'll advance through this week since this should be a win, and then we can check in at the divisional. Our game against the Lions is a W, 27 to 24, and we're taking on the Washington Commanders. I'll play a few moments here, and we'll sim through to see how the squad does in year nine. I think after this year, though, if we don't win anything, I do need to make a serious change because, they're, like, I'm actually Dallas Cowboying this. I've made the playoffs, like, what, six out of the nine years? And we have one Super Bowl from that. I just feel like we're going to the playoffs way too often and not doing enough with it. All right, let's start out with a drive here. I see my boy Hackett, the speed demon, open down the seam. There's 20 yards to start it out with Hoyer. I'm going to look at my boy Kevin Tiller next, see if he finds his way open on this. He doesn't, but we have... Ooh. We had the escape route. All right, second and 18. Is this man coverage? It is. Oh, my God. These blitzes. Look at the blitzes Washington's sending. These are nasty. Oh, I got my boy. No. 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 Damn. Getting mugged all the way down the field. I'm going to have to punt this away. Really good defense from the commanders, dude. I got screamed on twice. Ooh. Look at this. That might be a pick six. Damn, 34 is a speed demon. Good juke. Oh, almost Terrell Harper, who earlier this year, we traded Dion White for 84. Terrell Harper, who's now a 95 and just had a massive interception in this divisional. Dude, we went wild card, then we went divisional. Are we now going to go to the NFC Championship and lose? That would be so sad. I'm not, not I don't want that to happen. Obviously, I'm going to be happy in the NFC chip, but it would be sad. It would be sad. So good, Josh downs in the seam here i feel like that looks kind of open maybe not but there's kevin tiller <gasps> all right we got to go to coach's suggested plays here coach wants mesh spot third and goal what do we got there's kevin tiller can you get in the end zone fourth and goal from the two i'm not a field goal type of guy we got a 98 overall halfback and a great o-line you gotta use it it's kenneth walker's in let's go the buccaneers are on the board at home and now i gotta let this squad take over that's enough impact for me it's seven to zero 14 to zero 14 7 might be 14 14 after this it's 14 to 14 it's 21 to 14 with a minute 30 left we have three timeouts oh my goodness Third and 10, Eric Hoyer. This is a big one, Hoyer. You can't get flushed out like this. You got to give him a chance, Hoyer. He's only completed eight passes today. But honestly, this is the biggest one. You just got to complete this one. Fourth and 10, a minute seven. Hoyer drops back. You got to throw it, buddy. He throws. I think the commanders are going to win this game. Oh, my God. I thought the game was over. I didn't realize we had our timeouts. We stopped Washington and scored. We're in overtime. Kenneth Walker! Wait a minute. Oh my god. Our dreams are alive. Second and four. Unloads. Caught. Nice. Third and seven. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're gonna have a big man rumble for the fucking game. Dude, this guy has such a bad habit of scrambling out of that pocket. Ball game in OT. What an overtime game, though. Hey, respect to the Buccaneers for even pushing it there, but ball don't lie. Well, we're finally positive in cap space after year nine. We got 300K. But I'm not going to take advantage of this NFL draft. We need to make a trade. The problem is I don't have cap room to do it. I got to trade away somebody who's eating up a lot of cap here, which is also sad, but it's got to be done. I think it's Josh Downs who's going to have to get moved. 20 mil in cap for Josh Downs, who's now 31. One years old. Jermaine Wagner's 23. Carla oh no, let's trade Carlaftis because we're going to pick up somebody who replaces him, right? Somebody who does exactly what he does, but better. Look at Will Phelps, 98 overall on the Denver Broncos. So to convince them to give us Will Phelps, we're going to have to offer some serious draft picks. We're giving them a significantly worse edge rusher, but they'll get a first and second round pick. Will they bite? Dude, how do I? Whatever. I don't want to talk about it. This seems like a fair trade to me. I'm giving you an old edge rusher and a first and a second for your dominant 26-year-old 98 overall superstar X Factor. I don't care if technically I could have gotten more out of it. I feel like Madden just doesn't know what a fair trade looks like. So well, regardless, that's exactly what I was going for. Let's reorder this depth chart and take a look at the lineup. Dude, I do want to look at Will Phelps too. Guy seems like a beast. So Alani Johnson, you know what we can do with Alani Johnson? Rather than trading Alani Johnson, let's move him to wide receiver. He's going to be like 
semi slow as a wide receiver, but we need help at wide receiver. And honestly, he can do it. Dude's got 88 speed and 80 excel. He's 6'4". He was a small tight end to begin with. Yeah, this guy was born to be a wide receiver. Absolutely. You're not an NFL tight end. So now Tiller can still be our, our tight end. We've got Cobb in here at a 71 overall. Offensive line obviously looking a little depleted since Tristan Wirfs did just retire. But it's still pretty solid. Hayes is a 77. Petit Freer is still around. Yeah, we're good. Hankins is now star. White's in there with Dodson. Could definitely use an MLB too. That's a little bit better. But Phelps is now in. Okay. This could have been exactly what we needed. Will Phelps, 99 finesse moves, 87 speed, 91 excel. This is the exact guy we're looking for. Let's give him some insane abilities. Got to make him as good as we can. We'll go edge threat. We'll go no outsiders. We'll go inside stuff. And I think we want to go swim club. His X-Factor ability can be unstoppable force. Will Phelps, ladies and gentlemen. Given Eric Hoyer pocket, dead eye protected, and hot route master. Hopefully that'll improve him. All right, boys. Our 10th and final season. We're a 92 overall. Do we have any remaining true Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Oh, that's kind of sad, isn't it? There's nobody left. Well, it's a brand new Buccaneers roster nonetheless. Let's see how this 10th and final season goes. Hoping we can make the playoffs. We've made the playoffs so many times. We obviously didn't have any valuable draft picks, but here's the recap. We got a 70 overall corner, a couple 67s and a 68. Nothing impressive. The full NFL best player in the class was 78, Rayshon Smart. Really dog shit weak class. That is awesome to see. When you trade away your first and second round pick and then watch as that draft was trash, it's, it's a good feeling. So Will Phelps was definitely worth it. All right, boys, let's see what we can do. One final season, one final playoff push, boys. We're 10 and seven, taking on the 11 and six New Orleans Saints. All right, let's take a look at our final 10th year lineup. I definitely want to get in a few reps with these guys. Hoyer, Walker, Downs, Johnson, Hackett, Tiller, Solid O-line. Will Phelps now a 99. Nick's 99. So we have two 99 edge rushers, which I think is sick. This is such a weird time to switch to a 4-3, but we should be in a 4-3 super weird we're gonna try this yeah this takes advantage of the players that we have so much better damn i wish i'd seen that sooner all right let's take on the saints 10th year boys all right second and five saints are in scoring range they're gonna oh i almost could have intercepted that but good tackles all right we're pinching tanner white you have to live on devin white's legacy as the white tampa bay buccaneers linebacker and there's dante nix i think oh no Phelps. It's the backup D tackle. Came in for a big one right there. We got Nix on what edge? We got Will. Wait, no. Wait, no. That was Phelps. Oh, I had it right. It doesn't matter what I had, guys, because they just scored on me. Seven to zero. Hoyer's gonna take over. Let's see what we got, baby. I'm gonna throw Kenneth Walker here. He turns the corner. Huge juke. <laughs> All right, this will be my last input on this team. Wow, we've been through a lot on this squad. I'm gonna put Kevin Tiller on a corner route. I'm gonna put Hackett inside on a slant. Tiller, guarded by a much smaller DB. He didn't have a chance. Kevin Tiller, nice touchdown. Seeing it to the end of the game. We got 14 here. It's all tied up at 14. Saints make it 21. Now 28 to 21, it's possible. No, did we just punt? Oh my God, no. Saints have the ball. Why are they even doing anything with it? Dude, I thought for sure we'd get at least two rings. We, dude, Lonnie Morrison, the halfback, 14 rushes, 132 yards, and three touchdowns. This guy's a fucking animal. Dude, oh my God. I'm, I wouldn't want to be a Tampa Bay fan. We go to the playoffs. We get our hopes up every single season. And we came up short. I guess we did get our ring. We got our ring in year six. But wow, that was a tough one, boys. 28 to 21. It was a great game and it was a rivalry game, but that's it for this Buccaneers squad. 18 for 33, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Just couldn't keep it together there. Lonnie Morrison fucking dominated us. Chill out. All right, boys, let's get a final season recap. So in the very first season that we played, the Cowboys beat the Ravens in the Super Bowl. In 2024, it was Bills over Rams. In 2025, it was Raiders over Cowboys. In 2026, it was Chiefs over Eagles. A little deja vu. And in 20, nope, not yet. Sorry. In 2027, it was Ravens Niners. In 2028, the Ravens went back to back, but lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Our MVP was Max Crosby, who ended up being such a big difference maker for us. And the year after that, when he left, was a really sad year. We also got Offensive Player of the Year that year, Kenneth Walker. We got Defensive Rookie of the Year in 
Tanner White. And take a look at the offensive rookie of the year, Lonnie Morrison. Anybody remember that name? Because in 2032, when we got smacked in the playoffs, it was Lonnie Morrison, the Saints running back, who had 132 yards and three touchdowns. He was the 85 overall, wasn't he? He was. He was the 85 overall from that insane draft class. 29, it was the Eagles. 2030, it was the Vikings. 2031, it was the Chiefs once again. And in 32, it was the Vikings. There's a very serious Vikings dynasty building. So in 10 years, we probably won 10 to 12 playoff games. We went to the playoffs seven out of 10 years, but we only came home with one Super Bowl ring. So I'm a little bit sad, but it was a tough rebuild. I had a lot of fun and uh, we had a lot of success. Tons of wins, amazing records, but only one ring to show for it. Either way, boys. The 10-year Buccaneers rebuild was an absolute blast. I hope you guys loved it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, y'all.